Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome back to the shop. Today we're doing episode 47 on Project Archie and this one, for me, went a little bit off the rails. So let's hope you can either not have the same problem I did or come up with a more elegant solution than I did because my big constraint on this is I can't cheat out and use heavy tools when I need to. I'm trying to do this in a way that the average high school kid, college kid can do at home. So I had a point where I needed a lathe. <laughs> How many laughs like hell and says, yep, you need a lathe. <laughs> really bad and would have been five minute fix on a lathe, easy. I had to make a lathe out of hand tools. You gotta make a lathe right here. You're going to laugh by the end of this video a lot and you're going to comment and mock me a lot, but I challenge you to come up with a more elegant and or better solution than what I did. And if you figure this out in a better way than I did, please make video of it and post it in the comments below and let's help the next guy because I, I broke out some hardcore MacGyver skills to make this work. So let's dive right in. To start off for this particular step of the process, which is we're gonna mount the J5 motor and all of its accoutrement. So we're gonna start out with the J5 motor. You're gonna need that, which comes with its protective condom and the little tip cap. Mine, the cap here will be at this end when you first get it. I moved it around because we're gonna take it off anyway. You're gonna need the J5 motor housing. You're gonna need an M3 by five millimeter socket head cap screw. You're gonna need four M3 by 18-ish socket head cap screws. You're gonna start out with M3 by 18s, but you're probably gonna to have to file them down. I did. You're gonna need a pair of the TRA1625 washers. These are the thrust washers that'll be on either side of the NTA1625 needle roller bearing. You're gonna need four M4 by 10 millimeter set screws. And you're gonna need four M4 by five millimeter set screws. All right, so we're gonna begin with the J5 motor housing. That's this particular part. And you'll notice on top, there's this little hole that's not quite in the middle. This little hole is where we're going to install that M3 by five socket head cap screw. And this is going to be an actuator for the limit switch that will work with this. So just put that in nice and snug. And then just tighten it down. Cool. Step one complete. All right, for the next one, we need to secure our motor mount onto the motor. So what I'm gonna do is take this off. Now this is gonna have a little bit of schmoo in it. That's your grease. Don't wipe it off, you'll want it later. We can get rid of the protective condom for now. Holding the motor so that the leads are facing you, this is gonna go on with the little screw off to this side. Okay, so the screw goes to the right if the things are facing you and you're holding this right side up. Now this is where I ran into the first problem. So the tap depth on the motor here, the depth for these screws, isn't quite as deep enough as it needs to be for an 18 millimeter screw. So this is where you're gonna use your M3 by 18 screws, but in my case, I had to file them down a little bit. It's not hard to do, but there's some important stuff to know. So the way I did it was I used, yeah, you can see that. I used a set of soft jaws here. And on my soft jaws, I'll show you up close. On my soft jaws, you can see there's these channels. So I was able to put the screw down in like that and clamp it and have enough off the top that I could file it down from there. And that made this really not that difficult of a job to do. The important thing is if you're gonna file a screw, and I just used a simple flat bastard file. If you're gonna file down a screw, you're gonna damage the threads in the process. The best thing to do is to just, after you file it to the right length and everything's cool, chase those threads with a, a die and just clean them up 
I couldn't do that because I don't have an M3 die. So what I did instead is just take a, a smaller file, you can do it with that one if you want, and just gently file a, a chamfer around the end of it so that you've got the cleanest thread start that you can have. You're going into aluminum, so if your threads are really wonky, well, it won't be a problem, it'll cut a new thread. The bad side is it's a one-shot deal. So be careful not to cross-thread it, be careful not to screw up your threads too much, but I had to file these down a little bit, and I gotta think that within the next revision of the robot, like when Mr. Annan orders the next batch of these parts, he'll probably just modify the, the spec on this and it'll be a little bit taller on these. But for now, you just I had to file off like two millimeters. It's not a lot, it's not hard. It just took a minute and it's a thing that you wanna think through before you do it and you wanna file and check and file and check. You don't wanna take too much off or you're just gonna have to start over again. The trade-off is M3 bolts are cheap so I just got a whole bag of them at Fastenal because my kit was missing one. I know, I'm offended. So we're just gonna get these started in here and you wanna be really gentle. And don't screw it up. So I'm gonna go all the way down and then back just a little bit and then hit the opposite corner. And so you go backwards till it clicks. With just, especially on these, because these are, these are already kind of screwy threads, you're just the lightest of fingertip pressure. Just enough to, that's it. Don't, don't force this stuff. You're not, you're not working on a car. And there's a lot of people that I've seen doing this stuff, it's really easy. It's, it's habitual to come at this stuff very heavy handed. And you gotta, you gotta think like a model railroader or you gotta think like one of the electronics guys, just light touch, delicate, gentle touch. There's no reason to force this stuff. Just relax, we're having fun. You'll, you'll have a time in your life where some dude standing behind you yelling at you that it's gotta be done right now and oh my God, fix it, fix it, fix it. That's just the life of an engineer. Enjoy this stage while it's mellow and chill and you can take all the time in the world and do it perfect. Because like being a drummer, when you learn how to play the drums, you don't try to be fast, you try to be accurate. You take your time and you do it slow and you do the same thing over and over and over, very slowly, very gently, and it's all about being precise. Because if you can do that, if you can learn precision, if you can learn the touch, if you can develop that muscle memory, then you'll get fast. But when you're first starting out, when you're learning this stuff, slow, gentle, be chill, because you'll learn how it's supposed to feel. And if you have the luxury of being able to do that, at your own pace, on your own time, it's way better than having to learn it in a hurry while some dude behind you is yelling and there's water pouring out of the pipe, and oh my God. So this is, this is the way to do it. So with that, we've got our motor mounted. All right, so for our next step, we're actually gonna prepare this to go on the shaft. So we're gonna grab a two millimeter driver and you're gonna want four of your M4 by 10 grub screws. Grub screws and set screws are the same thing. So we're gonna, just put these in by hand and just get them in position because it'll be easier to do this now than have to fight around them on the robot. So we'll just put these in by hand real quick right now and just run them down to get them roughly in position. Now, if you run this screw in, you just basically just want it in enough that's not gonna wander off, but don't let this poke through on the inside or it won't work. You gotta just run it down just a few turns so it doesn't fall out and it doesn't interfere with anything. There, and we're making sure that nothing's coming into the inside. Now we get to do the fun part. This is particularly the fun part for me because, and it might be for you, 
The quality of machining on this kit has really been top notch. I'm, I'm very happy with it. I have no complaints. But on this particular part, the J5 motor mount, the machined hole down inside here, that, that inside diameter was five thousandths of an inch too big. Because this hole would not allow this shaft here to pass. So what I had to do was either shrink the shaft or embiggen the hole. Now there's a lot of different ways to do that. And it was close enough. Like it would just, it just, it'd like flirt with going on, but I couldn't get it on more than like 30 thou at the end. Now there's a number of different ways to skin that cat. The best way would have been to cool this with like a can of spray air is a really good way to do it. You can take a can of spray air, you can turn it upside down, and you can drip it on there. Only do this in a well-ventilated room. This stuff will mess you up. But you can drip this on there and make that very, very, very cold. And while you're doing that, have this part warm. As warm as you can get it without risking damage to the motor. As this heats up, it'll expand. As that cools down, it'll shrink, and then you can slip them together. If it's, if it's really close, you can do this. And it's Oh my God, a secure way to hook two things together. They do this in machine tools with like big, like cat 50 machine tools where they heat a thing up and slip the bit in and then cool it down. And that's all you need to hold a really like gigantic end mill that's hogging out huge amounts of metal. They do this every day in industry. The problem is once you put it together in this application, the way this is built, it's not coming apart. Which means if I did it as I was setting up for this video, well, I got one shot to do it and I better be rolling cameras when it happens and God help the guy at home who's trying to do this and might not get it perfect the first time. So that's not gonna work. So what I did was I took the other approach. I'm like, all right, we'll machine it because all, it just needs to be kissed with, with a mild abrasive. We just gotta turn this out a little bit. Just, just bore this out. This is easy. Chuck it in a three jaw, grab a boring bar and, ch -ch 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 and you're done. Nothing to it. Except I don't have a lathe or a three jaw chuck or a boring bar or any of that. Okay. So what I do have is a 51 millimeter hole saw. This happens to be just about the same diameter as that. They're, they're close enough. So using a space age polymer fastening system that is tolerant of not particularly dimensionally compliant interstitial shaft applications that would allow for some mild shock absorption and uh, will yet transmit that axial torque. I may have used electrical tape to tape that on the end of here. And now it's important that you don't like you for safety, one might want to grab the little M12 because you know, it's not as big. It's, it's, it's a little more forgiving, but those are my nice tools. This I got in a going out of business sale after it had been clapped out with a like five years of nonstop daily use in a makerspace. And now this thing is so beat to hell that if you, if you run it, I, I wish I had smell vision because when you run this, it smells like burning. <laughs> so this is not long for the world anyway. So this with its beefy 20 volt battery is what I put in the vise. Now, some of you, at home, by the way, soft jaws, of course, when you put your cordless drilling device. Some of you at home might be thinking, oh, that's not a bad idea. Just zip tie the, the handle down and let it rip. No, don't do that. You use one hand on the handle. You don't wanna have this just constant going. But I taped the thing on the end of here. I put this in there. So now you gotta have a tool to machine out the inside. No problem. What you need there, piece of 3 8 inch PEX. I've never actually used 3 8 PEX for water transmission, ever. Everything I do is half and three quarter. But I bought a stick of 3 8 PEX. I was standing in the thing at Home Depot and I'm like, 
That looks interesting. This is the kind of thing, you can get a five foot length of this for just a couple bucks. I have used this for more random crap around the shop. I recommend you get a piece. It's like five bucks for, for five feet of this. So I took a piece of PEX and I wrapped a sanding disc around it. I think I used a 120 grit. This is a 40, but I think I used 120 grit for it. And then this is my tool and that's it. And just Ta-da. It worked. If it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. And then I did something stupid. The stupid part is where I cut off a piece of Scotch-Brite because my surface finish inside was a little crap and I want to make it better. And Scotch-Brite will cut aluminum. It'll actually put a pretty decent surface finish on it. So holding it with my finger, which was stupid and you should not ever do this. Holding it with my finger, I stuck that down inside and let her rip on you. And just don't <laughs> never stick your finger inside a thing like this. Don't do it that way. Use a stick, a drumstick, I recommend. Personally, a uh, plastic dipped 5A with the nylon tip, really, for proper machining application. Do it with a drumstick or something, or just a piece of wooden dowel, but don't, don't stick your finger inside the spinning aluminum thing that's whipping along at like 3000 RPM. Don't, don't do that. It's a great way to lose a finger. So that's how I got there. And you might be laughing by this point, just at the, the description, but thankfully my trusted assistant got video. And here's what it looked like. So I'm going to make a lathe. Are you? Yeah. I'm going to make a lathe right here. I'll check back in on this progress in a minute. You're, uh, you're taping that with electrical tape to what exactly? To hole saw. Okay. But I took the center bit out, making a lathe. With electrical tape and a hole saw. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. You sound like a person who is mocking me. I've been mocked by people before. This is what it sounds like. Really? Yeah, it sounds... Well, that's super weird. That's a, just a weird coincidence. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we clean that up. Make it smooth. Oh, it's way better. Still not quite there, but now it goes on. You stay in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are, we are on the path. Glory and righteousness. <laughs> Never stick your finger inside a thing like this. Here we have a redneck lathe. If it's stupid and it works, it ain't fun. But I think I need something a little more aggressive. But I got nothing, I don't have anything that can open that big, so I gotta go from this side. Now you may be watching this thinking to yourself, that's the dumbest shit i ever seen! I'm telling you, you must not have been watching this channel very long. This is just Saturday. Oh man, that is, that is lovely. That's good too. That's perfect. That is the smuggest of smiles. I'm taking pictures. I'm gonna send that to my dad and he's gonna be like, boy, that ain't right. I'll bet he laughs like hell and says, yup, you need a lathe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I just, just, just put the comments below. Just, just, I, I know. Just, you're gonna have fun with that. But how would you do it better? Is what I want to know. Cause that's the best idea I had. If you have a better way to pull that off with just simple hand tools, I would love to know. Because I, I put a whole five minutes of thought into figuring that one out. And I'd, I'd like to know the better way, if you've got one, to do that without having a lathe, which is a common problem for like the average home shop guy doesn't have a lathe. All right, so we've got everything ready. The next step is to do our bearing. You're gonna grab one of your TRA 1625 washers. You'll have a number of washers in the kit that look similar. These are the ones that if you put a micrometer on them, or a set of calipers or whatever you have laying around, um, they're gonna come out at 32 thou. That's, that's where you wanna be, okay? So if you measure them 
on thickness should be 32 thou or 31 and a half if you're me. So that's how you know you've got the, uh, the TRA 1625s. So we drop this right in there. And then we grab the NTA 1625 needle roller bearing, and that goes down on top. And then we grab the other TRA 1625. And the whole assembly, just, just like we did with on the other end of this. Remember we did that? How, and it's the same parts, by the way. And this just fits perfect and does its thing. This does the same thing on the other end. So now, making sure that we don't have any of the grub screws poking through, and you hold these with your fingers so they don't fall down in the hole, just guide this right through and through the stuff, and that comes down, and everything fits just tickety-boo. And if you have it just so, this should, like, the whole thing should turn around, and you should be able to turn all the way around. If you can't turn that all the way around, if this hits, let me, let me back up so you can see it here. If your little screw hits on anything, you've got something wrong. You probably don't have all the parts in there. So this should be able to turn all the way around. Now that we've got everything on there, I'm gonna pop it off and get it all lined up. On your shaft, you'll have a hole out this end, a threaded hole. That hole has to line up in a very specific way. So we're gonna turn it 90 degrees, so now the hole is facing me. Yeah, you can see how I am on the robot. Now, on your motor, the plug in the motor needs to point straight down. And I'm not gonna do this with it laid out on the table because I want you to, yeah, that's still a tight fit. I want you to be able to see the orientation on all this. I'm gonna take this grub screw out so that I can see the hole all the way through and make sure I line that up in there. But the hole on the shaft needs to line up with the hole on the motor that when it's, when it's situated right, should be facing you if the plug is going down. Okay, so plug down, hole faces you on the shaft and you'll have a hole on the motor that lines up with that. Okay, I think I'm good. By the way, when you're trying to, like if you shine a flashlight down the hole to line it up, if you put your finger, see how you got the glare, the reflection? If you put your finger on either side like that and then shine the flashlight in, it gets rid of a lot of the glare when you're trying to look in there. Yep, that feels right. Okay, I'm in. And now I'm gonna tighten down the other screws. And this whole assembly will still turn. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this so that it's down and everything's where it should be. So that's how it should look when it's done. I'll turn this around so you guys can see it. If you've got it just right, your grub screw here goes through the hole in the shaft, in, in this shaft. Your motor will be facing with the, uh, the cable down and the little screw should also be pretty much facing down. Yeah, not quite, but pretty close. So that's the whole assembly there. And for the last step, we get to grab our M4 by five screws. These are also little grub screws. And these are gonna go in this end. All right, now I'm just putting these in until they just kiss because these are going to preload these bearings. These are designed to take slop out of the system. These are not designed to bind things up, but if you over tighten them, they will. 
So you can see I'm just running this down with just fingertip pressure until it just thumps. Okay, so that's what you're going for. Watch my tool. Thump. Okay. That's all the harder down I'm going. You can always adjust these later, but these are just there to preload that bearing. And just the weight of the tool is enough to do these, to start. How does that feel? Do I have any slop? Can I move everything easily? Because if you can't, then those are too tight. Like if you grab this and it's hard to move, those are too tight. You should be able to move this with your fingertips. Okay, this, this should be fingertip pressure and you should be able to go all the way around. And if it's making any grinding sounds, or if it's like, if you gotta grab this to turn it, it's too tight. Conversely, if you can just, with your, if, if you can just grab this and just bing, and it goes, it's too loose. So this is, this is where you wanna be. It shouldn't turn, it should stop on its own, but it should be able to be moved with fingertip pressure. If it just spins, you're too loose, and if it won't move, like if you've gotta grab it, then it's too tight. But I think we're there. I think we built a thing. I think we made it happen. Look at that, looks like a weapon. That is cool. That is J5 coming together. And it looks sexy as hell. That is so neat. I'm digging it. This is a lot cooler than when it just had a little stubby arm there. This now, now it's got, there's things happening. And this is where stuff gets really complicated as we get out into J5 and into the end of the robot and all that. This is, there's a lot going on out here. Like this, this is a lot of video already because there's a lot of little steps. Plus, you know, we got to share some story time and stuff. So that's always fun. Now for me, for now, what I'm going to do, this, this will come off later, but just to protect things from dust and schmoo, I'm going to put the condom back on it all the way down in there. And I'm gonna put this on the end because we're gonna need that later and I don't wanna lose it and I don't wanna screw it up. So I'm just gonna put that on there as a little safety device. But at this point, you have accomplished step 47 and you've got, you've got a fifth axis happening. This is cool. This is, this is the J5 motor and rotational assembly. It's pretty sexy. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for being part of this. If you're building your own robot at home, I want to hear from you. So comment below, and if you check the links in the description, you can find a Discord where you can be hanging out like the, the guys are in the live stream right now. You can catch this live. You can be involved in this. You can follow step by step. You can ask questions. If, you, if you've got your build going on or if you're interested in learning about this and you want to build a robot, you can get in my Discord. You can get in the comments here. Ask all the questions you want. This is made by Annan Robotics. This design is from a gentleman named Chris Annan. And you can find everything you want to know about this robot at annanrobotics.com. They don't sponsor these videos. I'm just another dude just like you. So it's a pretty cool time. Thank you for hanging out. I'm Chris Bowden. And as always, I'll see you next time.